In April of 1865, General Lee's Army of Northern Virginia was an army on the run. Forced out of Petersburg, Virginia on April 2nd, Lee's battered but still dangerous army marched westward in a desperate attempt to link up with Confederate General Joseph E. Johnston's army in North Carolina. All along the retreat route, the Federal Army under General U.S. Grant nipped at the heels of Lee's column. Clashing with it on numerous occasions during the first week of April 1865. On the 6th of April at Sailors Creek, Virginia, part of Lee's army was brought to bay and suffered a horrendous defeat. One of the soldiers who fought at Sailors Creek was Captain John Burns of the 140th Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry of the Federal Second Corps. In a letter written home to his father nearly three weeks after the battle, Captain Burns describes his participation in the fighting and other leisurely activities. On the morning of the 6th, we moved out from Burksville and had not gone more than two miles when we discovered that we were marching nearly parallel to a rebel column and wagon train, not more than a half mile distant. Two batteries were double quick to the front and began shelling the train. I tell you now, they closed up quickly. Our brigade, being in front, was thrown right forward upon their rear, which was just passing. To get to them, we had to go down a gradual descent, cross quite a large creek, through which we plunged, and then up a long hill. On the way, we passed a large fine residence surrounded with poultry of all kinds. Though we were going on double quick and under a sharp fire, not a duck, chicken, or turkey was allowed to cross our line. Every boy seemed determined to have a fowl for dinner if he should live to eat that meal. I knocked a chicken with my sword, grabbed it, and went on. Lieutenant Sprague was equally successful, and when we reached the crest of the hill, there were not less than 30 chickens, six or eight ducks, and two turkeys captured by the 140th. I note this as one of the very peculiar characteristics of the American soldier. We fought all day inside of the train and just at night struck them such a blow at Sailor's Creek that they left the train and all its contents with several pieces of artillery. The 140th was the first or among the first to the train and officers trunks and things in general were gone through in short meter. I could have gathered up a fortune in a few moments. I got into a general's trunk and secured his toilet case and a few trophies. I did not look at the name. Some said it was Hunter's, but other things gotten from the trunk had the name of General Harris. I harnessed up two mules with saddles and saddle pockets, got a contraband, gave him his orders, and went on after the enemy. We drove them from the hill beyond and encamped for the night. I had me a servant, two pack mules, some flour, meal, bacon, sorghum, and chickens. So we were going to live for a day or two, providing we didn't get shot. Army life was hard not only on the soldier, but on his clothing. Soldiers were allotted only two uniform issues per year. Occasionally, those uniforms could be replaced due to hard campaigning, but it was the duty of each soldier to care for his personal clothing. Soldiers were charged against their pay for lost or damaged uniform parts. Even though jacket and pants were made of durable wool, they often needed to be repaired as they became worn. The most common repair was the replacement of lost buttons. 
Even more challenging was the repair of tears in the fabric or the seams. In order to make those repairs, a soldier carried in his haversack a sewing kit known as a housewife. These were not issued by the army, but were given by ladies, wives, sisters, sweethearts, or aid societies for use in the field. Because housewives were tokens, each one was different. Some were plain, others were example of the finest design and craft. Each housewife typically contained needles, pins, various thread for different applications, spare buttons, and perhaps a thimble. Thimbles were used in sewing. This particular housewife has a really nice place to stick the thimble. The interiors of the housewives are usually lavish and rich. Here's another example of an interior of a housewife. This particular one has a silk interior. In this example, the area where spare needles are kept was made from wool. The wool has been elaborately cut in a circle design with a sawtooth pattern. This example is more homemade. It's easy to see that the interior piece of silk probably came from a lady's dress, one of a girlfriend, wife, or mother. The needle area has initials embroidered into it, ACM, probably for the user. Each one of these pages would have different size needles inside, some for heavy work and some for light work. Spare buttons could be found in a little pocket that was directly underneath the needle area. Rolling up the housewife made it very compact and easy to fit into a backpack. Most soldiers were not adept at sewing, but did it anyway. And they kept this useful keepsake, this housewife, as a reminder of home.